Alright, alright, I gotcha. You want to start dipping your toes into the world of animation and Blender and create some sick shots like this. But then you get petrified after looking up tutorials for animation and find images like this, this, and this. Nope. Well, don't fret, because today I'll try to break it down for you without making it feel like you're taking a college-level calculus course. Hopefully. Alright, so let's start off by making a basic animation. The way this is done in any 3D software is by using what are called keyframes, which are essentially placeholders that give Blender information about an object at a certain moment along the animation timeline. When it comes to most simple animations of objects, the information held by the keyframe will be the object's location, rotation, and scale. Thus, by using multiple keyframes, we can tell Blender that at one moment in time, we want our object to have a certain location, rotation, and scale coordinate, and at another moment in time, we want our object to have a different coordinate. Blender will then automatically create an animation between these two keyframe coordinates to get our object from one place to another, from one scale to another, or from one orientation to another. I'm done. <laughs> no! Whoa, whoa, okay, hey, hey, calm down. I know that might sound complicated, but in practice, it's like stupid easy. No late night studying required. All you need to do is position, rotate, and scale your object in the way you want it to start off, then click I on your keyboard. Then you can select which information you want your keyframe to store, then move, scale, and rotate the object to its final position and click I again to place your second keyframe. Now we can click the play button and Wow. We have a finished animation. Now just keep adding keyframes to make your animation longer and more complex until you get something you like. Alright, so now you know how to animate, but even after adding all the keyframes you want, your animation may still look a little rough around the edges. One way to go about fixing this is to change the interpolation between keyframes. What is that? What is that? What is that? Wait, it Wait, okay, I know that word might look like one you would find in a calculus textbook, but trust me, it isn't nearly as complicated as it looks. You see, interpolation is how Blender determines how your model will move between keyframes. By default, Blender has all of its keyframes set to Bezier interpolation, which allows your model to move smoothly between keyframes. However, there are other interpolation models you can use to create specific animation effects. To access these, simply click one of your keyframes and then click T. You can see that in addition to Bezier, we also have linear and constant interpolation. Linear interpolation will essentially cause the movement between your keyframes to be constant as opposed to the speeding up and slowing down effect you'd get with Bezier interpolation. And then we also have constant interpolation, which is kind of an oxymoron because it causes Blender not to have any interpolation between keyframes at all, but rather just jump from one to the other, kind of like a stop motion video made by someone with zero patience. In addition to interpolation, there's also easing, which depending on the exponent chosen, can create different accelerations between keyframes. And lastly, you can also add dynamic effects to your animation, which can be used to fake physics so that you don't have to go through the horrors of making an actual rigid body simulation. So yeah, feel free to mess around with these effects to get something you like. For my animation specifically, I use some quadratic easing to create some acceleration as my spaceship begins to fly away. Okay, so after some interpolation and easing tweaks, your animation may look better, but if you really want to take your animation to the next level, open up an extra panel and switch to the graph editor. Bruh. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, this might look like some integral calculus, but trust me, it isn't as scary as it looks. You see, if we drop down to this panel right here, we can see that Blender has each of our keyframe properties listed, which in this case would be our model's location, rotation, and scale. Each of these properties has a corresponding line on the graph, which gives us a visual representation of how the value of that property changes over time. Why the heck is that useful? Well, it essentially gives us an insane amount of control over our animation. For example, let's say I don't like how quickly my spaceship loses momentum as it's turning. Well, all I need to do is go to the rotation property that I want to edit and and then click on one of these points which represent a keyframe. Then, since I'm using Bezier interpolation, I can use these handles here to smoothen this curve, leading to a smoother turning animation. Additionally, since Blender gives an individual curve for each animated property, I can also edit the rotation curve for the X, Y, or Z axis individually, which once again makes my animation even more customizable. Another thing that the graph editor allows you to do intuitively is add extrapolation to your animation. And yes, I promise this is the last big word you'll have to learn today. 
You see, extrapolation is the opposite of interpolation, which means that instead of Blender determining how a property changes between keyframes, Blender will determine how a property changes after and before keyframes. In the case of this spaceship animation, this is super useful because it means that instead of putting a bunch of keyframes to keep my spaceship from stopping midair, I could just extrapolate the last keyframe so that it keeps ascending indefinitely. To do that, all I need to do is select the keyframes of the properties I want extrapolated, which in this case would be the X, Y, and Z location, then select channel, extrapolate, and switch it from constant to linear. Looking at the lines for these properties, you can see Blender has created linear lines extending out from them, which continues the animation from the last keyframe. And once again, since we are using the graph editor, we can adjust the orientation of the extrapolated lines to make smoother animations. All right, to complete your lecture, I mean, uh, tutorial in the art of animation, I'll teach you about one other little trick in the graph editor, and that would be the modifier tab. This tab, as you may have guessed, allows you to add a bunch of different modifiers to your animation curves in order to get different effects. For the sake of time, however, I'll just show you the most useful one for animations in my opinion, which would be the noise modifier. You see, when you animate almost anything other than a robot, there is going to be a little bit of random jitter and noise involved in the movement. Thus, by using the noise modifier, we can add a little bit of randomness to our animation. All you need to do is add the noise modifier to one of your curves, then mess with the scale and strength parameters until you get something that looks natural for your animation. For my spaceship here, slow noise on the X, Y, and Z rotation axis really helped to give my spaceship some natural instability in the air, which left me with this final animation. And that's pretty much it. See, what did I tell you? You just learned how to animate without it feeling like you're back in a school classroom. You're welcome. Oh, and by the way, you'll have a test on this next Friday that's worth 50% of your grade. Bye.